January 8th, 2016. In the coastal Mexican city of Los Mochis, an elite group of Mexican Marines battles Sinaloa cartel operatives. The prize, possibly the world's most wanted drug lord, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman Loera. It would become the final act of a manhunt that mobilized more than 2,500 people across Mexico. After two prison breaks and over a decade on the run, Guzman had evaded authorities for the last time. A year after his capture, he was extradited to the United States. This is a story of the power of drug money, the bling, the muscle, the corruption of authority, but it's also a story of that power's limits. Chapo Guzman was in a prison called Altiplano, which is a supermax prison in just on the outskirts of Mexico City. Now this is a place to even get to the row that he was being held on, which was sort of a solitary confinement. It, you went through like 15 different doors and each would have to close before another would open. The cell, there was no toilet, there was just a hole in the ground. There was a small shower stall with maybe a waist high wall. He's just kind of pacing, walking back and forth which I imagine a lot of those guys do in that situation. There's not much else going on. He goes back and checks behind the shower stall, comes back to his bed, takes his shoes, goes back to the shower stall again. He bends over and he vanishes. And you're just like, well, where did he go? Joaquin Guzman Loera, alias El Chapo, or Shorty, was on the run. This guy's escaped again like for the second time from maximum security after one year in prison. It sort of defied the imagination. You couldn't make something like that out. The escape route led from a hole carved out of the reinforced concrete floor of his shower to a ventilated tunnel equipped with light bulbs and a motorcycle on rails. He is driven about a mile underground to a little cinder block shack outside of the prison where he manages to escape. According to authorities, the light bulbs that lit the way were smashed, perhaps to delay any pursuit, though those efforts may not have been necessary. Despite 24-hour video surveillance, it took the prison guards some 25 minutes to realize something was wrong, and nearly three hours to put the prison on lockdown. By then, Chapo was probably long gone, on his way back to his stronghold in Mexico's western Sierra Madre Mountains. Chapo, the pioneer of the tunnel, tunnels himself out of Mexico's most secure prison. But it's the kind of thing that if you saw it in a television show, you'd be like, oh yeah, Hollywood. But it wasn't, it was just Chapo. The escape plan took more than a year to carry out. Authorities believe the diggers had GPS coordinates to precisely locate his cell. And no digging or noise disturbances were registered by officials. I think that there's, there's no doubt that there was some level of of corruption involved in the escape of Chapo Guzman. The question is exactly how far did it go up? Between construction and bribes, the costs were estimated in the millions of dollars. It obviously cost a lot. It was, a, it was not an inexpensive undertaking, but then again, it's like, that's not even a rounding error for something like the Sinaloa cartel. You know, Chapo could fund that with like pocket change from a weekend. Across Mexico's northern border, the United States is the largest illegal drug market in the world. The White House has put its value at $100 billion. At least $6 billion makes it back to Mexico every year. And half of that may go to Chapo and the organization he belongs to, the Sinaloa Cartel. It's the kind of cash that can buy a lot of things. Tunnels, officials, weapons, and plenty of bling. Mexico City, one of the largest cities on the planet. In 2011, National Geographic correspondent Mariana Van Zeller went to Mexico to better understand the drug war and its excesses. 
We're driving around uh, one of the most expensive neighborhoods here in Mexico City. This is sort of uh, the Beverly Hills of the city. Homes here are worth millions of dollars. There are security guards on almost every corner, and we're about to go visit one of these houses. This mansion was seized by the Mexican government. At the time, the house had been vacant for four years and under 24-hour guard. 